Hi, good morning and happy Friday. Or maybe happy Friday is at like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Um, so thank you for coming here uh, early in the morning and good to see you. And the talk today is, has one fundamental question, but I'd like to start with, with a really great company that everyone here knows about. Uh, it's Porsche. So, of course, Porsche is known. They have some of the most desirable cars in the world. But like every salesperson knows, you never sell a car. You're selling an experience. Sometimes it's the experience of driving fast, the luxury experience. Sometimes it's the family experience, the safety experience. Right? People want to feel safe. Uh, and part of that whole experience is, of course, the experience you have with the company when you buy the car, and also the experience that you have when you take your car to be repaired. So that service is part of what you're getting, and salespeople and good organizations really, really know that, that it's all one big package. And so, okay, these are very... Uh, my slides are off. They have the wrong slides. But I'll keep going uh, without the slides, and, uh, and I think that can be updated. And so in, in Porsche, they take that super seriously. And, and their technicians are trained the lowest level that you'd need to get uh, the bronze level, is 18 months of training and learning and classes if you pass every single exam at the first time. And to get to the gold level, to become a gold trainee, you need three more years of training. So these are some of the most highly trained people, like, and they're passionate, and they have a brand that they want to represent. And, and yet, given all of that, when we worked with them and they introduced AR into their processes, they improved the time to get your car back by 40%. So instead of you waiting two days for your car, you got it the next day. And again, for them, the, the huge part about it, yes, they're making their workers more efficient, the, the team is better utilized and all of that, but the customer, Right? The customer experience, they're not leaving you without your car for two days. That's the big thing. And sharing that experience with you, you can, knowing why it's taking so long, what's happening, is also part of that. It improves the experience. And so again here, I think they have the, the wrong version of the slides, but I'll try to work around it. And the big point is the difference between why that worked so well is the difference between guidance and training. And where does guidance work and where does training work best? And, and in 1970, I know sometimes in these conferences, we're not, we don't remember that there was a year, 1970, but some archaeological evidence proved that there was. And even at that time, and those times, okay, I think these are the, yes, these are the right slides. So thank you, guys. And so this is what I was saying. They had, when they introduced AR, they had a 40% reduction in, in the time to service a car. And, and the key is training versus guidance. You know, in sports, this is drilling versus skirmish. Some things you just want to prepare for beforehand and getting, get them into an automatic program, but some things you just want to play on the field. You need the coach and you need the captain and you need the team to make those decisions on the field. You need the guidance, and that makes a difference. So in 1970, uh, Giri Rommel and Thomas Gilbert, who were experts on, on getting the efficiency of teams up, 
wrote this practice report on where to use guidance and where to use training. And these two slides, the next two slides, if you're going to take anything uh, from this, just take these two slides because it would, it's a fundamental distinction between those two cases. And guidance is for tasks that has many small steps. And just getting the person to focus on the right step at the right time incredibly in increases their efficiency because the human mind can hold three, four things at a time if they're worried about the context, if they're worried at where they are in, you know, in the list of uh, tasks, they will, that actually reduces their efficiency you know, significantly. Of course, also the tasks should give you the capacity, you should have the ability to get the instructions right, and the guidance while you are doing it. Right? Some things you just need to go through very, very fast. You don't have the time to listen to the coach. You just need to shoot. And then, in general, there are, there are tasks that are good for guidance where accuracy is more important than speed. If you have half a second, something is crashing, you, you don't have time for guidance. Right? You just do whatever you want. It needs to be automatic. But if you want to do something once and do it right, you're working at a nuclear reactor, there are no redos, right? These are big, big things. Then, then guidance and getting the expertise, getting the best opinions and insights that you can to do it right from the first time, that's when it's needed. Uh, and, of course, there are tasks that are performed infrequently. And this, this is actually very, very interesting. Uh, some of our customers, for example, have 10,000 to 100,000 manuals out there. And they're big books, they're thick. So let's say they do 2080. So they, you get trained on the 20% of the manuals. And there are still 2,000 to 20,000 manuals that you're working on. Um, and if you're solving five problems a day, you still will get daily one problem that you're not that you're not trained on. So even with all of that work. So you try to go to 4090, now you have 40,000 manuals that, you're, that you learned, and still every two days you get a problem that you haven't solved, that you don't know how to deal with. So the long tail is bigger very frequently, it's bigger than where it, what we think. And guidance is really, really good for that. You get experts that are focused, on different parts of the problems, and they can support the whole team no matter what happens. While on the other hand, this is the other side of the story, for training, it's for tasks where speed is more important than accuracy. You know, just do it, do whatever you can, do the best you can, do it quickly. You have redos, you know, you, you missed this shot, you have the next shot. Right? But you cannot, wait. you cannot wait and plan and strategize and optimize it. These things need to be automatic, and that's where drilling or training makes a huge, huge difference. And task where getting the instructions and posing for them interferes with what you're doing, obviously. And tasks where small errors are not a problem. You know, it's okay, you did it 80%, you did a good enough job, and it's okay. So we train you to hit the 80%. We don't train you to do the best job ever in the world. And, and that's good enough. That's where training uh, really works. And the key point, how this connects to what we're doing here, is that AR is born for guidance. So, so these things that we do right now with augmented reality, you get the instructions and the images overlaid on your field of view, the right, the right things said to your ears at the right time. And that, all of that, that was a dream. So when, uh, when Rommel and Gilbert wrote their report, they, there were actually also still tapes, and they had a tape recorder strapped to somebody to tell them the instructions at work. Right? So they were dreaming of a headset or something that can that can give you these instructions 
and knows where you are and all of those things. Uh, and that's why this is the right, right, the perfect marriage, the perfect fit of problem and solution, of challenges and solutions. And it's, right, it's hands-free field of vision computing, the information that you can give in the right time, in the right situations, through the eyes, right, through our visual cortex, is much bigger than you can give through any other way. A picture's worth a thousand words. And, and that makes AR just perfect. Um, what, what takes it beyond what people in the 1970s ever dreamed about are things such as contextualization. So right now, when you use AR solutions, when you use our, our solution, your expertise, what you have done before and succeeded at or failed at, is taken into account. What you're good at, what you're not good at, is taken into account. The experts that are available to support you, their special expertise is all taken into account. Right? The problem that you are facing and its details are all taken into account. And what that does is that it takes the whole possible world of things that you have to do and cuts it down to what you really should do. Right? You, you get rid of all of those distractions and possible other contacts, and you focus just on one thing. And it's transformative for both the experience of the worker and the quality of the work. And, and just taking right, the bloatedness out of it, it's predictive. Right? Again, you're working in a, uh, in a nuclear reactor. You really don't want things to go wrong. You want to solve problems before they happen. And not only you want to, again, a server, you want to replace it before it crashes, a computer, we all know those examples. But then there are tasks where the, where the bets and the stakes are even much higher. And having that predictive, contextualized, coordinated effort there, just in terms of security, in terms of safety, in terms of uh, the quality of the work, it just transforms the whole thing. And finally, it's, uh, it's collaborative. And this is really, really big, because you're bringing the whole team, you're bringing the whole team to the field. Right? You're one person working on the car or the airplane, but you have the expertise of all of your company, every expert. They've gone through years and years of solving the problem that you are facing. And you bring all of that together in one place, right to the field. Instead of them being in their offices, there are people, again, in the nuclear reactor um, example. Once you get exposed to a certain amount of radioactivity, you are asked to retire. Right? You cannot go next to the nuclear reactors anymore. And basically, that means once you get experienced at a certain level, you're kind of too experienced, now you have to retire. It's, it's really hard. And this allows, those people are very passionate about their jobs. They're, they see it as contributing to a humanity, to a greener world, and now they cannot do it. They cannot contribute anymore to their companies and to the world. And you, uh, this allows them to be right there with, with, uh, with the less experienced people who are dealing with those problems to handle them. And, and again, it's a win-win for everybody. So these are the elements that just transform, transform the guidance experience. And ultimately, the result, you never do training for the sake of training. You never do guidance for the sake of guidance. Ultimately, it's the value that you are adding to the lives of your users, your customers, and your team. Right? And, and that we need to focus on. And to see where, where is guidance and AR the right thing to do, and where is training and preparing them beforehand as much as possible the right thing to do. Um, and the one question that I'd like to leave you with is what type of tasks, whenever you see a task, either in your work, your customer's work, you just think, 
hey, is this better to be trained on beforehand? Do we not have time in real time to, to give instructions? Or is this a guidance style task? Do we have redos or should we do this right from the very first time? Uh, and if you need, actually we have some time for q and I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that in the beginning. And if you need any information and the practice report or the slides, please just contact me. Uh, and uh, now Q&A time. Is the guidance personalized? Yes. So we, we have, you know, different companies might have different approaches to this. Uh, our approach to context is very, very broad. So we look at context as anything that makes, that is relevant to the task at hand. So, what you, like I mentioned, what you have done before, what trainings you've gone through, what you're good at, what you're not good at, all of that, and the personalization, even for your experience, right? This type of instruction videos has worked with you before, this type has not. We look at that, so personalization, and we were, is part of context, and we give you the type of instructions, right, that is, that has proved to be to work best with you before. Um, and how do you decide what types of tasks should get guidance? Uh, well, that's kind of the, the core of this talk, right? So slides two and three, that's basically how they decide. Uh, in short, in short, a task is right for guidance if accuracy trumps time. Right? It's not a split-second decision thing. You, you want to do it right versus just do the best that you can. Uh, if it's something that happens less than 20 or 10% of the time, right? so just training for all of these things takes a, takes a long, long time. And things where if you have a small problem, it has a huge, huge repercussions. And is the content downloaded beforehand and used offline? Is it used via building Wi-Fi personal hotspots? This is, uh, this is actually very important. Um, and the way that we do it is yes. And, and I think that's the right way to do it. In, in the sense that you want to take the risk out. So whenever possible, you want to download anything that that is possible to download and have it on the system with the person. Connect, you don't want to worry about connectivity issues. You, don't want, you want to have online, offline mode. You want to connect however it's possible to connect so that you can bring the team together and bring the experience together. Um, and you want to make sure, right, connection and Wi-Fi isn't only about the instructions. It's also about the contextualization and the prediction. And so if something happens, and now your task changed because right, the nuclear reactor reached a new state, uh, then, then connect and connection, connectivity at that time is super, super important. Um, but you want to rely on that as much as, uh, as little as possible. You want to have the task as, as robust and as independent of different factors as possible. Make sense? Thank you guys so much. I hope this was very useful for you, and sorry for the technical errors.